<clears throat> good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Thank you for checking out another one of my weekly Forex or Crypto Analysis. Let's go ahead and get things started. So first and foremost, we do have... Um, actually, I want to go look at investing.com for the news instead of Forex Factory real quick. And then I'm going to have this week. And I'm only looking at the three stars, right? I only look at the high impact news. We have CPI for quarter three on the New Zealand dollar tomorrow at 4.45 p.m. So that's something to watch for. This is in Central Standard Time, of course. Um, 7.30 Central Standard Time. There's meeting minutes. That's something for Australian dollar that you would want to pay attention to. Oops, sorry. Um, CPI for the GBP. The, guys, this is interesting. This is so interesting. Because the euro or no, no, let's just take let's just let's just pay attention to this because we can i cannot ignore what happened last week last week and we'll, we'll even go look at it on the chart let's go on to inflation is this my chart yes it is so we have inflation here and inflation right now is currently at 8.2 percent which is still ridiculously high which is still ridiculously high, even if this gold was at 7%, it'd still be ridiculously high no matter what way we look at it, right? But when we come over here to, when we come over here and we see that, hey, the GDP, their CPI for the year to year, and the euro, the CPI for the year to year, they're both coming out on Wednesday. One's going to happen at 1 a.m. Central Standard Time. Another's going to happen at 4 a.m. Central Standard Time. And they're both forecasted to be 10%, which the euro was already showing that, hey, our CPI for the month to month is 10%. So if it's the 10% for the month to month, then the year to year is going to be the same thing for the euro. They're expecting the same thing for the GDPs. That's more than likely going to have to end up start having some repercussions over here with the US dollar inflation. You know, the US dollar inflation is... um right as of right now it went to the once sorry once the cpi numbers come up for the gp and euros i mean even right now even right now the inflation in europe is higher than the inflation in the united states so that technically means that yes it's technically right now cheaper to live in the united states than to live in in the in the united kingdom or in europe anywhere in europe right but regardless, that's going to push up the U.S. dollar inflation really high. I really do believe so. So, I did not mean to open that. So then we have building permits coming out for the U.S. dollar. Previously, is 1.542. I've been saying that, you know, when it comes to building permits, it's nothing, something really, is, this is more something that if you're interested in real estate like how I am, or like how I'm paying starting to get into as well, because that boy, he's getting, he's getting hit, he's getting nice with it, but this is just something that you would want to watch out for. Core CPI um, for for Canadian dollar is going to be at at um on Wednesday at seven thirty a.m. Central Standard Time. Give me a second. This is month to month, but something's off. previous actual yeah i'm not really paying attention to this one right here this is core cpi core cpi is something that i would have really paid attention to more of this week because the core cpi it's is just really showing the like it's just more of the perspective of the consumer than anything and they're looking at no change which is kind of true in my opinion so maybe even an increase of anything leader summit that's something that i don't really watch for existing home sales that's probably going to be looking to go down as well as inflation increases there's no way that existing home sales or um building permits are going to increase it's not a good luck it's just going to start decreasing some more and it's it's a, it's a sad reality core retail sales 0.4 percent um canadian dollar. i'm not really paying attention to that so really cpi cpi 
um, is really what you're looking for, especially on Wednesday. Wednesday is really what I'll be paying attention to this week, in my personal opinion, when it comes to the GP and the Euro CPI. Other than that, everything is like, eh, it is important, but it's not as important as that CPI. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this dollar before we talk about anything else. So let me first of all see what I had on the lower time frames. Okay, these are just what I'm looking at. Okay, 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 okay. That's cool. I'm going to hide this for now. And this as well, because we're still going to we're still going to talk about those. But I want to look at the weekly. All right. So right here, right now in the weekly time frame, I'm not going to lie to you. The U.S. dollar does not to me look like it's going to turn around. Now, it is interesting, however, that the volume um from two weeks ago is lower than the volume of than the volume that happened on this candlestick that happened to reject off of a lower down a lower time frame retracement Fibonacci, which I'll get back, I'll get to that shortly. But this candlestick right here isn't telling me necessarily that price is ready to turn around, but it can be a potential. You know, it kind of looks like a doji. Um, the body of the candlestick is a little thicker than I would have liked it to be for me to consider it to be a real legit doji candle, but there is a possibility, you know. Um, daily time frame, I do like this bearish engulfing candle right here. And the market did open up with a gap on a lower time frame from the looks of this, but and the closing it probably. And you know, I still and price never engulfed off of this daily, and this daily time frame does have the most volume according to the rest of the volume, except for this candlestick. And this is something that I was watching um on Thursday as well. Let me see something. Okay, yeah, awesome. No, it's just my wife texting me. But yeah, it the volume with this candlestick on the daily matches this volume right here, which if I'm not forgetting, I forgot what news event this was that shook the market. The price went bullish and it came back down to these lows down here. And this is where I was like, okay, I'm looking for buys, but I'm going to be looking to short over here. But regardless, four-hour time frame, let me get that feedback up here. Is it this one? That's I'm keeping that up too. Boom. So what I was saying that, hey, from this high to this low, if price pushes to the downside and comes into the 78.6 monthly swing level, which I'm still paying attention to, and it holds here, I was especially saying, I was saying that if it holds right here, I'm going to be looking for price to go bullish because it's going to be a fib from this low to this high that plays out perfectly, which it has been. It has been, it played out very nicely from the 78.6 down here, right? That was the first, that was when we're like, we're, no, US dollar isn't ready to go bullish yet. I mean, isn't ready to turn around and start to go bearish yet. Then I was like, hey, right here is where I'm going to be looking for it. And it's so funny how the market played out because it really held at the 71% and consolidated. Came up here one time, pushed to the downside, came up here twice, Pushed to the downside a little bit, came here up again one more time, pushed to lower and acted like it was going to break out to the downside and then took out all of these stop losses up here and really, and you can see it much better on the one hour time frame. It came right down here, acted like it was going to continue pushing to the downside and then boom, popped to the upside came up to the 78.6, grabbed all the liquidity that's right here, all of the traders that, you know, they were selling from right here, you know, the stop losses that were at break even or the stop losses that were, that were up above here or the buy stops that were set for right here and their stop loss was down here, boom. Price went right up, grabbed that liquidity off the 78.6 and then pushed to the downside. I'm waiting for price to get up to 113.475. It will be very discouraging for me to not get this trade. But I'm not going to be mad because guess what? I'm in the higher time frame swing of this on Euro USD. You know, that was a excellent call last week from Peyton, you know, with that Euro USD swing swing by. Wow, that was beautiful. And it's we're just expecting, hey, price is going to retrace back up here. And once it comes back up here, boom, continue going to the downside. Because isn't it funny how this matches up right to where 
this these previous highs were. And that's what price really took out was high volume and then dropped like this. So it was like, yeah, guys, I'm definitely looking for this to sell off. Going over to Arby real quick, going over to seeing what what the dollar is looking like over here. Okay, so daily time frame. Daily time frame is still extremely bullish on the US dollar. And it has I have no qualms with that because right now, realistically speaking, the dollar is still extremely bullish. So there's no reason on the daily time frame for it to even start to say, hey, I might be starting to turn around. Absolute only thing is that it bounced off the second deviation. Other than that, I have no issues with this decision. Um, four hour time frame, on the other hand calling for sales. Now, it did come up slightly higher than this RSI line, but I am still here for the sales. And usually with a play like this, I would legit have to have my stop loss if I were to if I were to have gotten in. Let's just say if I were to have gone into this trade right here, it called for the sell. Actually, on the 4 hour, I would not be in it yet. Now that I'm really looking at it cuz there's no confirmations. Never mind. But I am very excited to see that price is at this upper danger zone and it could slightly go a little bit higher. I would love for it to do that just to fall. One hour time frame, ooh, we might not get an entry because if it's rejecting off of this um, upper danger zone right here, this might be really it and price just might continue pushing to the downside. And if it does that, so be it. I really have no problems with that because again, I am in a swing sell and I mean, I'm in a swing buy on Euro USD. And if it goes, if it continues going bullish, hey, I'm solid, man. So let's go over to your USD. First of all, I need to, that needs to be green because I'm in this. So it's the exact opposite of the dollar with this, with that, um, with that bearish bias that I have. It's the exact opposite with your USD. I want your USD to, and I'm just going to do it on the lower time frame so I don't have to do it. After I do my weekly top down, I still want to talk about the weekly and, and daily candles. I just want price to come over to 0 0.96722, 0 0.96720 for me to then take it to the upside. Let me get that back. Sorry. Now, if price does start to go bullish from where it's at right here, comes up to the 23.6 and then pushes to the downside, I may play it. But if it comes to the 61.8 and then comes to the 23.6 and then pushes back down, I won't. That's just how I play. If this sets up, then I'm, I'll call it out. I'll call it out in the chats, basically. But other than that, it's the same move, right? Higher time frame. Let me show you the play that, that we're in. Sniper by position. Like, can't get more sniper than this on the higher time frames price literally four hour time frame is better is a better look in my opinion we're like hey we want to see and it was this was already here right we want to see price push to the 78.6 to the downside for it to continue going bullish once price came right here it came right here real quick whoop, left instantly with a bullish engulfing candle and a bullish volume the biggest volume that we've seen in a while in a in a lot of candlesticks and a lot a lot a lot of candlesticks guys like there's so much time there's a, we haven't seen this much volume and here i'll even tell you how much volume it is on this four hour candle 264.023k compared to the second highest volume that I'm seeing just right here, just in this spectrum. The second vol highest volume is right here, and that's 42.112K. So just that's almost four times the amount of volume on this bullish candle. There is no way that I'm not going to play this buy. You know, the only way that I'm not playing this is if all of a sudden MetaTrader forecloses on my on like on everywhere and I can't place a trade. Other than that, I'm I'm buying. Again, once price comes to 0 0.96720. And hey, man, I, I said that I'm putting 2% on this. I have no problem putting another 2% right here. Based off of this trade setup that I'm seeing, 
I'm, I'm, I don't, I have no problem pu- pu- putting in another two percent there. Quite honestly. So, and like I always say, if I say that I'm putting two percent on something, you might as well take the trade. So if we don't get the setup and prices continues going bullish, I'm okay with that because I'm already in this swing. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, let's go over to Arby before I switch on over to you, Chef, and start going bull oh wait before before i do that before i do that before i do that uh i need to look at this weekly candlestick though i did almost disrespect the weekly that does not want to show volume oh because i hit it that's funny um weekly candlestick it look this looks more doji to me than the last candlestick. So this is giving me hope that there can be a potential turnaround on the US dollar. For the I like the doji candle on the weekly. You know, volume is still pretty high, but the volume is starting to slow down on the weekly. Or cool down, I should say. Bullish engulfing on this. And not a bull bearish engulfing. I am yeah. I have no qualms. I have no problems trying to buy um your USD. All right, so this is you, Chef. You know, this was a quick one to one play that ended up playing out on this. Was just tracking that, but it wasn't a high probability play to me, in my personal opinion. What I'm really watching out for with you, Chef, is kind of this. I'm waiting for the same thing. I want prices came up. I want price to break down of this structure right here, and then once it retraces, I'll look for sells. You know, that's what I'm really looking to play safely on you, Chef. It has been going bullish. And for those who have got a chance to watch my um, weekly analysis last week, you know, I had said, hey, if you want to play a buy stop, you can. That buy stop, it's, I mean, the stop loss was down here, which, you know, I'm, I said I'm not a buy stop person. But the buy stop played out pretty nicely. Um, so I didn't play it, but I, the setup was there, right? So. One thing that I do want to watch for is where this volume is sitting at on the daily. And why is my phone jumping? Who's t- man? I'll text you later. Mm, price came back into this volume, but price has not come back into here. All right, I love seeing that price has not came back into this volume yet. Not yet, as so. This move definitely is what I'm aiming for. I'm still waiting for this to happen. Now, I am fully 1,500% already knowing that the possibility of this pushing to the downside does exist. But because I'm waiting for Euro USD to set up, I'm still thinking that there could be a potential that price can go to the bo- to the upside real quick before falling. So I'm just going to wait for this breakout all the way to the downside. Before I look to um, wait for the retracement before I sell it, because because overall, just like how U.S. the U.S. dollar is very much bullish, this is still very much bullish and it has not broken structure enough for me to try to play it. So I got to play. I got to wait for it. Let me see. Uh, Okay, um, give me a second. Let me answer this. Yes, it is up. No, okay. And sure. Give me a second. Let me send this link to somebody that apparently wasn't able to sign in. There you go. Okay, so... Yeah, like I said, you, Chef, I'm going to be waiting for this. This is the safest play, in my opinion. Um, Point of control, where is it? To the downside? Yeah, so it's to the downside. But I see this. This is something that it's an ugly fib, but I see it, and I cannot ignore it. You know, it looks so ugly, from the, especially on the one hour, but it's easiest to visualize it from here. So from this low to this high... Prices already came to the 71% and went bullish, right? It's, if price comes back down here, I'm not going to be looking to buy it. 
but there is a possibility for it to go bullish. I mean, from for it to go bullish from here, but because it's already done that right here, I don't think it is going to, you know. So we're gonna see what happens with you, Chef, but I'm not really paying attention to it that much for a trade personally. Okay. Let's take a look at gold. And man, am I kind of mad that I didn't place a buy limit right here because I literally said last week that there is two places that I'm looking to buy gold at. And one of them was the lower risk opportunity that hit stop loss, which was this trade right here. And I literally said, if stop loss hits, my second trade will get ent entered into, which it has. And right now it's currently in profit. But we're going to talk about the loss real quick, and then we'll go on to what I'm talking about right now. So last week, got into this gold trade. It was, for the most part, it was in drawdown, right? For the most part, it was a trade. Wait a minute. Was this what I was looking at? Yes, it was. Yeah. So I don't know why it just looks like it's just not a lot of price uh, price action that happened. Price came into here. We were in the trade for we were in the trade for a good amount of time. No, I don't think that was a setup. I think there was a different setup, and this was just a paper trade. Hold on, yeah, there's no. I don't think so. I'm trying to really find the trade that I took. Let me let me just go back and take a look at my files real quick. And then I'll be able to tell y'all what I'm talking and I'll be able to tell y'all the setup. Let me see. Oh, okay. I know. There you go. I'll just do this instead. Here you guys go. So this is the trade that I took. Right? Where I got into the trade on the gold futures chart. It was at 1681. And it was consolidating for a good amount of time. Almost stopped this out down here. Went into profit multiple times. We had multiple opportunities to get out. And we knew that this was not a good trade, especially with CPI coming up. But we decided just to stay in. And price ended up pushing to the downside. Okay, cool. So that's just what I wanted to show with the, the, the trade that I just talked about. But now, this was what I was seeing on the... This is what I was saying, higher time frame on gold. Let me get rid of this fib. I'll put it back up. Wait, actually, no. Let me not delete it. Let me just hide it. Because we can reuse it. So... 71% higher time frame. When we talk about higher time frame, I'm talking about weekly, monthly, whatever time frame you want to put it at. Higher time frame on gold has hit 71% at the Fibonacci level, right? Like, and that is a big, it's a big level, you know? There's multiple times that gold had hit the 61.8 up here and I wasn't convinced that it was going to hold. I was like, if price comes down here again, when it retraces and falls down, I think it's going to keep falling, which it has done, you know, and price bounced off the 71% up a little bit. I still feel like there are two options that are going to happen with gold. Either A is going to come up here real quick from the 71%. It's not even going to do a full 71% one-to-one type of trade for me if I were to play on the swing. But I feel like it's going to come bullish up here to like 1778, 1783-ish area before falling down. And again, these are on gold futures chart. With the gold futures, you have to understand that more than likely, it is not going to match up with the pricing that you're seeing on your on your um on your MetaTrader four. And the reason why I look at it is because the volume on the gold futures, in my personal opinion, looks a little bit more accurate than what it looks like on this gold chart right here. You see, like, look at this. Look at all this. That it just looks like, oh, this is just nothing, 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 nothing. For months, for months, there's just, and then all of a sudden here we see, oh, boom, a huge spike in, huge spike in volume. Where when you go on to the, where you, and this is, and then when you go on to the futures chart, then it's like, oh, okay, this is much more spread out. So this looks much more realistic to me. You know what I mean? That's why I like going on the gold futures chart more than, this chart, I, I hardly use this chart now. I just, but what I do is 
whatever analysis that I have on here, I just go and do the exact same analysis on my MetaTrader 4 chart. So that way I just have boom, 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 the exact same thing that I'm playing. You know, it's just different coordinates. But usually if I ever call call out a signal with gold, it will be with this chart instead of the futures chart. But anyways, continuing on. <clears throat> so this was the fib that I drew out and I'm like, hey, this fib right here looks like a possibility for gold to go bullish at. And I'm like, there's two setups I'm going to play. I'm going to play up the first setup, which was an L, or I'm going to play this setup, which, you know, again, I'm kind of upset that I didn't set a buy limit for it. You know, and the reason I didn't set up a buy limit for it, I I think, you know, I don't know what reason. I, I, if, I, if I were to give you a reason, I'd be lying to you. You know, I think the reason why is because I was already in a buy play on gold. And because there's a whole bunch of other setups that I saw, I didn't want to play this. That's probably the best bet that I can give you, but I couldn't tell you what my mind state my mindset was to not play this or to not set it. Um, I don't know why I just changed the chart, but yeah, overall four hour time frame. If I were to be if I were to have be in a in a um hedge 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 buy on gold, because realistically speaking, there is still a swing gold play that is still smacking hardcore. But it'd be this play right here, right? I'd be in the trade because this is the exact same thing that I talked about last week. And I'd be looking for, I'd be in a buy and I'd be looking to take price at least up to the 38.2 extension. And since it's a hedge, why not? Just take it to the 61.8. Make it a 1 to 6.7 risk reward trade. Right now, you'd be up. Not by much, but you'd be up regardless, right? And like I usually say, I'm like, hey, anywhere inside of this zone, once that 78.6 gets hit, or even before the 78.6 get hit. You know, that's just up to you. I just like, for me personally, nowadays, I like once the 78.6 gets hit, that you can go ahead and, and play the buy. You know, if you want to, anywhere in here, whether if it's right here, whether if it's at 71%, whatever it's at, but the best risk to reward is going to be at the 78.6. So, definitely, definitely want this to go bullish. The price action is a little janky, but just like how I'm feeling with Euro USD is gonna go bullish. I feel like it's gonna do the same thing with gold. This bullish move that it made like the past from um from over here back in September 28th all the way to here, it did convince me that hey, this can go bullish for a little bit. You know, it still has a lot of retracing that it has to do regardless. So sure, let's go ahead and play bull moves when they happen. It broke structures that I wanted it to break. And I'm like, hey, let's take it. So, again, this is a buy that if you want to get into, go ahead. You know, it's literally just a couple pips away from my entry. It's literally only 40 pips away from my entry. So, if you are worried about some 40 pips, for you to potentially get my TP1 on this trade will be, let me see real quick. My TP1 on this would be up over here at for the gold futures. In fact, let me just come over here real quick and do the exact same setup that I have over here, over there. That is. Oh, interesting. Wait a minute. Hold on, boy. Apparently. On here. That pricing hasn't even gotten hit yet. Let me go and look at my MT4 real quick, guys. Hold on. I'm sorry. I know I'm taking a little bit longer than usual. I haven't done a, a weekly analysis for next wave in a minute. So, no, no. On my MetaTrader 4, it hit. Never mind. Let me make sure on a different broker real quick. Huh. Interesting. So, on one of my brokers, that price would have got hit. But on another one, it would not have gotten hit. It would have barely, barely, barely missed. So I like that. I like that. So that means that this is still playable. That means that this is still playable for a lot of people. 1639.253. I had this marked up already. You know, this was already something, again, I was already seeing it um weeks ahead like this is something that i've been i've been watching for it's either this play that i was going to play 
or like I said, 1674. And the 1674 play, it hit stop loss, unfortunately. So, yeah, this is what I'll be looking for on gold, no cap. I'm still going to be looking for this play. Now, if it does definitely miss there, and again, it's so interesting that one of my one of my brokers for sure, for sure, would have got me in this trade. But the other one, it wouldn't have even it wouldn't have even like the spread wouldn't even have even came close to my entry. So it's so interesting how that happens. It looks just like this. Just like how this looks like how it came so close. That's exactly how it looks like on my other broker versus on one of them. On the other one, it looks like this, that it hits smack daddy perfectly. So it's so interesting. But no matter what, this is my my gold bias. I am looking for a gold bias right now. And excuse me. Let me get the actual take profits on here for you. Mm, AB fibs. Nope, wrong one. There you go. Risk to reward. So 1663.68 is one to one. 1688.316 is one to two. 1713.29 is one to three. 1737.9 is one to four. 1762.55 is one to five. And 1787.187 is six, one to six. Quite honestly, I think that taking price up to that one to five, one to six area, if it activates, because this has not activated yet, if it activates, then I think that will be a good, a good, um, a good place to take all profits. Like you don't even have to wait for 1801. However, 1801, that is where the 618 extension resides. So let's see what happens, but I'm excited for this. I'm glad that on my other broker it didn't get, it didn't even get there because now I don't have to feel bad. But that means that if price does come back into this pricing, more than likely it's going to have to drop slightly lower for some brokers, whereas on others it's just like, oh well, you just got me boom sniper in the entry. But we'll see what happens. Overall, I like this play going bullish. Oh, let me take a look at RB real quick. And I don't think I took a look at Yushef on RB. So let me take a look at Yushef real quick. And let me see if there's anything that's going to tell me to sell, which I doubt there would be. Yeah, there's nothing telling me to sell other than 15 minute, which I'm not playing this. Goldilocks, 15 minute time frame is calling for a buy. That's cool. Whatever. I'm not looking for the 15 minute. One hour time frame, still bearish. So, so, the, so if this, if the one hour is bearish, I'm going to tell you guys right now, more than likely the four hour, the daily, the weekly, they're all bearish as well, because overall gold has been in a bearish market. Four hour time frame, bearish. Daily time frame, bearish, never caught a buy. Weekly time frame, still bearish. Yeah. So I'd even have to look at it to know that. All right, it's going over to uh, these indices, my boy. These indices are wild. Okay, so this is another setup that I had, and you know, I had mentioned to I had mentioned this. This was the trade that we got in, and we broke, and I broke it out at e break even. But it still looked like a suitable play. This was something that I was looking at last week, right? I was, I was like, hey, from this high to this low. We can get into the price at seven. I mean, to the trade at seventy eight six. But the way how price moved from and again, this is just something that this is how my system is. You know, once price comes to the seventy eight six right here, and it comes up to the sixty one eight, especially if it comes and leaves a wick at that sixty one eight. No matter what, I'm with my stop loss to break even because that is more likely going to be a recipe for price to hit stop loss, which it ended up doing that right as the news hit, just like with, with gold. Both of those, they hit stop loss right at the same time. I didn't lose any money off of this because my stop loss was at break even. So that's just, you know, when you have your system and you know how to play it, play it well. But anyways, let's go on to the weekly real quick. Just want to talk about that. Weekly time frame looking like a potential Joji candle off of this structure, which is fishy to me. It's so fishy because I know that there's people looking to 
um, buy off of this. And the reason why there's probably going to be people buying off of this is because ever since prices broke above it, this is actually the actual first time that it came to this area. Ever since price broke above its previous all-time high of $3,585, this is the first time price is really coming back and retesting these levels. And just and on top of that, right here, this is where the breakout really started for it to go and hit the upside. And would you look at that? And now I know that there's a lot of people that but I wouldn't draw a fib there, but I'm like, that is where the breakout happened for a major level. It's kind of hard for me not to see that. That, that 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 price has finally come back to this level after so long and it's actually holding here at this level you know that's actually something that i'm like you know what and it's the same thing that with euro usd and stuff it's not the bottom but it is is a potential it is like out of all the potential places where i said for the indices or for eu in them this is looking like the most plausible and the reason why I'm saying this is because look at where the volume is gaining the most attention. The gain out of all this whole time for this whole month, I mean for this whole year, other than here, the most volume has started to accumulate over here. In the in these past one, two, three, four, five weeks. Is that a coincidence? Maybe so. I don't think it is. But personally, I like this daily bullish engulfing candle with this daily bullish volume with it. And even the next day after, it didn't even give that much volume either. This amount of volume matches this right here, which was showing that, hey, I'm looking to go to the downside. And once it showed this volume that it was looking to go to the downside, what did it do? Just that. So with this volume and it showing this, I am realistically looking for buys on this. I'm not saying that this is the bottom, but I think that this is a potential area where price can go and grab a whole bunch of a liquidity. <coughs> cough, 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 up over here at 4045 or cough, 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 up over here at 4151 or up over here at 4387.5 or <laughs> I can keep going with this. But you know what I'm saying? There is a lot of upside that SPX can cover and I think that it should cover so that it could be a healthy move to the downside. It doesn't have to be though. Trust me. The market does not have to do what I am what I would want it to do. It can do the exact opposite. I'm just I'm just analyzing and seeing what the probabilities of my trades are going to be like. So you chef, I mean SPX 500. Let me delete this. <coughs> looking for that push to the downside and you know if price bounces up a little as long as it doesn't come to three six seven nine point five it's fine for it to come up to a little bit and then push to the downside and i would still get in the trade for it to go bullish i would have i have no problems with that honestly but if price comes up to three six seven nine point fifty and then tries to do this move i would be me personally i'd be extremely hesitant in, in buying it not saying that you shouldn't, but I would be extremely hesitant because I just don't like double dipping. I know the chances of double dipping as much as yes, they are there. It is not a high, it's not a high risk opportunity in my opinion. Um. So yeah, and if price just drops from right here to down here, I'm hitting them. There's so many, there's so many opportunities in the market right now, in my personal opinion. And you know what? I'll tell y'all which ones I get into. Once I get into them, I'll be like, okay, boom, this activated for me. Boom, this activated for me. Boom, this activated for me. But I'm going to leave y'all the decision to play whatever you want to play. I've given your USD, you chef, I said you can sell right now if you want to. Um, stop loss, you would have to put like 1.00741, but that's your personal preference. I wouldn't right now. I just let it do its thing. Gold, you know, I already gave the setup and I said once this activates, if you want to, you can play in it. I'm still waiting for this pricing over here at 
1639 and the indices i mean if if i'm giving you this setup on you sh boom right there if i'm giving you this setup on spx 500 it's literally going to be the same thing on us 30 and nasdaq i personally feel like just because how the nasdaq has been moving i have not seen well actually let me not lie i have seen it and the nasdaq looks like it's already getting there and you know i don't necessarily want to just say that i don't want to play the nasdaq because it's already getting to the pricing that i wanted to get to when the other indices have not yet gotten there because there have been times where that has happened and it's just like okay well cool i'm still going to go i'm still going to make the move i want to make with the nasdaq and then the others don't play and the others don't get activated but Overall, Dow Jones, 29049, go bullish. Same thing as SPX. But yeah, you have all these opportunities that I'm giving you guys. Pick two or three of them, please. Don't pick all of them. Or if you're going to pick all of them, risk 0.5% on each one of them or something. Don't go and put 1% on each one of these trades because... All these trades, guess what? They're all related to the U.S. dollar. So if the U.S. dollar by itself says, no, I'm not doing any of this, then all these trades are going to be duds. So pick two or three, risk one, one to two percent, and boom, boom, you're good. If it's the indices, what I personally do, I play all three of them, and I just put 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, risking... Oh, I was about to say, um, I, I, I didn't know what was that on my desk real quick. But I would say that, yeah, put 0.5 risk on each and each one, SPX, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, play them at the 78.6. Um, three things are going to happen. One, all three of them are going to activate and all three of them can hit take profit. Two, or actually four things can happen. Two... And what I mean by take profit, I'm talking about just one to one. Anything above that, that's extra money. Um, two, one of them is going to hit stop loss, and two of them are going to hit take profit. Three, all three of them are going to hit stop loss, or four, two of them are going to, um, two of them are going to hit stop loss, and then one of them is going to hit take profit. So that's why I play all three of them because there's different outcomes that can always happen. So, yeah, like I said, NASDAQ, it's already here at the 61.8. I And it's like, okay, you're already here. And if you're already here, that just means that more than likely, sorry, more than likely, this is probably going to hit 78.6. And once it hits 78.6, then Dow Jones or the S and P are barely going to get to the sixty one eight down over here, and so once they try to get to the seventy eight six, that's going to push the Nasdaq slightly lower to like right here, which will then be having people in scary hours. But as long as the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq, if they come down here and then they go bullish, as long as they do that, the Nasdaq should be fine right here, and go bullish as well. So. We'll see what goes down. Um, like I said, I'm playing all three of them. And, you know, either A, NASDAQ is going to get stopped out, and then S&P and SPX, I mean, S&P and Dow Jones, they go in and talk, take profit, or not. We'll see what goes down, though. We'll see what goes down, and I am excited to see what happens. So, Bitty Coin, Bitty Bitty Bitcoin, literally the same thing as I was just mentioning. In fact, before I continue looking at this, let me just go look at SPX 500 on RB real quick. And whatever it looks like on RB, I promise you it's going to look the same on it's going to look the same on Dow Jones and SPX. Bearish, bearish. Oh, yeah. 4 hour time frame, it called for a buy but prices underneath the RSI line, I would not be in this buy quite yet. I would only want to get into the setup that I already just talked about. Um, and then one hour time frame, I'm pretty sure it's bearish. Yeah. So nothing to play here on RB either quite yet. 
for me is going to Biddy. Same thing, Bitcoin. I'm looking for it to come. Uh, let me what? Let me just go. Let me just go ahead and let me see what. Let me look. Take a look on the daily. Pestle and oil. I'll take a look at those last. Please remind me to look at oil and peso last when I get to like um. I'll take a look at the GDP. Sure. I'll take a look at the GDP today. I have time. But please remind me to take a look at that. But I do want to talk about bitty bitty Bitcoin on the higher time frames before I talk about anything on the smaller time frames. Um, haven't done a good top-down analysis on Bitcoin yet. So before I say anything, I'm always gonna stand by this. Anything in between 28,600 and 17,600 of Bitcoin is an excellent area to buy a Bitcoin for a hold on to dear life play, as in you're holding this on for two to three years, maybe even 10 years. You know, I say two to three years because at 2024, that's when we're going to start seeing a bullish move. And then, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to be patient enough to hold Bitcoin from these lows to highs. I really don't know, but you should. You definitely should. All right, we just got a close of the weekly candle. Um, Despite everything that happened on the weekly last week, this is a very underwhelming candle to me for Bitcoin. A very underwhelming candle to me. There, just like how with the, with the Nasdaq and US thirty, there um, that they have a lot of like correcting to do to the upside. In my personal opinion, so does Bitcoin. You know, maybe we'll start to get that correcting to the upside next year where I feel like something like how down over here when price was correcting and then it pushed to the upside like this. I feel like something like this is going to happen next year or maybe even Christmas time. You know, that now that we're getting close to Christmas, that's why I'm really thinking, because look, this happened during Christmas time. Uh, I remember this thing. This is like this is literally my first year trading. And this was literally where I started to make my transition to a full-time trader, like in this area. This is crazy, man. Damn. But I remember this, when price was over here in the AK area, and then it shot up to, I think, 13 or 14K. 13 or 14K. Wait, was it? It was, oh, no, it was, so I, I was thinking that it was going to get to 12 or 11, 12K because of this. I said that, man, if price comes up here, I would sell it up to like that 12k area it never got up there price ended up shooting to the downside it is what it is um came up to this equal support area where this is man this is where some resistance traders would have won heavy but yeah that's what i think is going to probably happen we're going to have maybe in december we're going to have a couple of weeks in the beginning of the year that price goes bullish a little bit before starting to turn around what did i just do I have no idea but just run back. All right. So same thing over here. I feel like that can happen. But the volume isn't telling me that. Let me go look at the futures real quick. Or I think I might have them here. Yes, I do. Um, Weekly. Oh, yeah. That weekly on the futures is different on the futures. You see how big that volume is? It's the same... Uh, I mean, it's not as high as this volume with this big candle right here, but still, it's pretty it's pretty impressive nonetheless. So that's something to pay attention to. But I'm going to go back to my other chart. OK, so. Woo, bitty baby coin. OK, um, I still am kind of in the in the avenue in the area where I think that this can still push to the downside. A little bit and then shoot up or something like that. I still feel like that. I don't think that this is gonna start retracing yet. <clears throat> um daily time frame. This had a good spike in volume on Thursday, so that's good to see. That Thursday volume it is higher than the majority of the volume since Sunday or Sunday of October 1st. So the highest volume of the month. That's awesome. And, you know, with that highest volume of the month, I am down to take the opportunity to buy it. I'm really down to take this buy opportunity on Bitcoin. So, again, it's basically the same setup as with the indices. 
price come down to 18k then go bullish i'm down for that setup quite honestly what i would love it if it does like an abc pattern like how it's doing kind of where it's like a b i would love for it to climb up a little higher and then drop for a c pattern and then down here pop i would love that um it didn't break four hour structure but it did break one hour structure to me like hardcore did broke it broke some structure for me like right here whether if it's this zone right here whether if it's just structure right there or if it's just structure right here, it broke structure for me, for sure. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play this buy. So once, yeah, once I get this drop right here, again, I would rather prefer price to go up a little higher and then drop for like an ABC pattern. But I am buying down here. So this is the setup that I have for Bitcoin. There are like, and Peyton is going to already gone over these things. So this is just a, like a double back up for the next wave. Um, the free next wave channel. This is like things Payton has already gone over, but yeah, I'm looking for these setups. Um, going over to Ethereum real quick. Ethereum looks like it's gonna take a, a little bit longer to get there, but still the same exact play. And I'm not gonna talk about Ethereum on the actually. Let me go talk about Ethereum on the higher time frames because I have to because Ethereum looks different than what Bitcoin does. Okay, so. Um, if you know, you know what these lines are. Well, hold on, give me a second. Dang, my phone. Okay. Um, these lines, weekly time frame pricing, where dollar cost averaging is perfect for Ethereum, in my personal opinion, for a HODL move as well. Same thing as what I talked about with Bitcoin. We can see, though, that Ethereum is not at its yearly lows, like how Bitcoin is. Ethereum is still at this zone, and it rejected off of the 71%. If we're being completely real here, this is a setup that Payton talked about, and he said right here at 12, at 1,224, that could be a potential area where you can look to buy um, Ethereum longer time frame. It's smacked, it's in profit right now, and it can definitely continue going bullish, quite honestly. However, we're looking to buy Ethereum right here. We're thinking that if Bitcoin, I mean, with this wick right here and then how price shot back up, that in itself is more than what Bitcoin did. We're thinking that, yo, if Bitcoin in real life, because look, it, it didn't, it, it, it just made the wick. That's all it did, but it didn't break any lows or anything like that versus ethereum it literally broke some lows and then came down here we're thinking real life that if if bitcoin pushes down over lows to like the 14k 13k areas and stuff like that that if and ethereum as long as it holds up to 1125 and i know that that you guys have heard this a bunch of times whether it's from me when it with DeFi and arbitrage or whether it's from Payton who's mentioned it we're still looking for buys down here that's still being watched heavily however right here right now with that price action that just happened with all the us dollar pairs just like how i'm looking for buys and all that stuff on the indices and bitcoin i'm looking for the exact same thing on ethereum 1195 you know, and if stop loss gets hit, guess what? We're about to play this move right down here, and we're gonna and we're gonna run this up too. So, yeah, that's what I have for the cryptos. I'm gonna take a look at RB real quick, and then we'll take a look at oil and the pesos before I hop off. Or actually, no, I gotta look at the GPS as well because I did say that I am going to talk about them. So let's take a look at RB. Bitty bitty Bitcoin. All right, one hour time frame called for a buy. Wow. Ooh, I don't know if I would have played this quite honestly, but man, is this gonna smack? I don't know if I would. I don't know if I would have played this quite honestly. Um, four hour time frame. Oh wow. <coughs> yeah, this whole time four hour time frame it was holding right here, and then went bullish like that, huh? Okay, and it's called. I mean, it called for buys the whole time right here on this candle is where the confirmations would have been like buy and then price retraced yeah 
Yeah. Ooh, man. That might be uh, my price might be going bullish right here before. And then if it comes to this upper danger zone, I'll be looking for sales on Bitcoin. But daily time frame is still very much bearish. So overall, yeah, I like this buy possibility right here <laughs> on Bitcoin, personally. After it did this big wake to the downside and then push to the upside, yeah. We'll see what goes down with that. Let me go take a look at what Ethereum looks like on RV real quick. It's probably the exact same thing. Yep, it looks like the exact same thing. This is already at the upper danger zone. Yeah, yeah, nothing has changed. No, no difference in my opinion. Okay. Let me see what this is over here. GPUSD still in this swing cell. It, it went to one to one. One to two was down here. It didn't get there. Um, and then price had gone bullish over here. I don't price opened up. This is not an open up and gap. <clears throat> I mean, this is not an open and gap pricing, is it? Yeah, it is. Damn, the market opened up with a gap like that. And then GU is just going bullish. Um I don't know, man. I personally <clears throat> I personally like the possibility of price still coming over to like 1.11258 for a buy opportunity on GU based off of what the other USD pairs have done. You know, I still like that. So I'm still going to be, I think, paid, waiting for that. However, price came to the 71% right here and then went bullish. So I'm just like, I think it's already done one to one. Oh, it came extremely close to it. It even come close to it. I mean, it even hit it. And the one to one is literally where it just hit. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to be playing this GU personally anymore. But I see the possibility of a possibility for it to go bullish for reals. But we'll see what happens. Overall, I'm it's still a bearish GU. This trade is at break even. So let's just I'm just gonna leave it alone for right now, GU. GJ is savage. Um as of right now, I'm waiting for this to happen. I'm waiting for price to just daily time frame. Let's just keep it stacked because the JPYs are continuing to fall. I'm just going to be like, if if it does this, goes bullish, and then bearish on it, then I would look for retracement and then continue with change to downside. Go. So there you go. So that's what I'm looking for on GJ. I'm not really going to get too deep into it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at U.S. oil. Let's take a look at what this oil talking about. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this. Not crazy about the double bottom or double top. They had that oil trade, but I wasn't crazy about it. All right. <clears throat> Overall, weekly time frame on U.S. oil. I mean, price came to the 78.6 at $76 a barrel. Came right there, bounced up, went bullish, had a bullish engulfing. Candlestick right here. Hold on. Give me a second. I want to see some volume on this thing. Let me see. Let me look at this Texas oil that Peyton has right here. Oh, he has the same oil that I do. Never mind. Let me see. Light crude oil. Okay. I think this is, yeah, this is exactly the same chart. So let me go ahead. There you go. Okay, so got some volume up with it. This bullish engulfing candle, as much as it's really go bullish engulfing, it's average volume. So I don't like that average volume with that move. I mean, the same thing happened with this big bearish engulfing candle, and it was with among its average volume, but still, it, it did this play that I wanted it to. Um, higher time frame, and I'm kind of mad that I didn't see this. I would have sold and called for a sell on oil right here 
at ninety three dollars and twenty four cents, I would have for sure. There is no reason I would not have called that. You know, because it's just structure hasn't broken yet to the upside realistically, except for this structure. So I would have called that, and I'd be like, overall, you know what I'm seeing right now on the four hour time frame as prices coming to the downside. There's structure that did that price did break, so it's a possibility that this can start to turn around for a bullish move to the upside. We might start to see start to see a rise in gas prices in a few months. But overall, with oil, I'm looking for this right now. Either it's gonna just keep falling and then push down here to eighty dollars and nine cents before going bullish, whether if it's a one to one move or continue going bullish. But this is what I'm looking for on, on oil right now. After this bullish move, it retraced. I like this structure break right here. Oh, and there was double tops right here. Yeah, I like that a lot. So that's what I'm looking at for, for oil, for sure. You know, let me see what the, this is Brent oil is basically kind of the same thing, but this is light oil. Light oil is $86.38, while Brent oil is $92.83. So you see the differences. You just have to watch what broke what your broker has, but it's literally the same setup for me. It's literally the same setup for me. Let me see weekly time frame if it's the same setup as well. Nah, it's it's quite different because this would have to still drop some more. Which if it has to drop some more, then maybe this has to still drop some more to get to eighty one dollars, and then light oil would be like, well, I gotta if that's what you're gonna do, I gotta drop a little lower myself, you know. But and then this is our. I'm not looking at. I'm not looking at natural gas or these other ones. But it's literally as you guys can see them. It's literally the same thing. It's literally the same setups with all of them, in my opinion. So that's for oil. Now let's take a look at my tacos. All right. Last setup. Let's talk about what I thought I saw on tacos. Man, did this smack. I said from this low to this high price, push to the downside. Boom. We got it. We got one to one. Like one to one moved, and the price came back to entry. After that, when price came back to entry, it did a little bit of drawdown, but then boom literally came very close to one to five one to one one to two one to three one to four smacked but one to five almost got hit and then price came back down and just came back to entry again so it's just playing around right now for me right now i don't necessarily want to play with this it's just consolidating and i hate when us when this pair um, does this i really do that's probably the reason why i stopped trading it if i'm being quite honest with you but from this high, I mean, from that low to this high, price has been just bouncing up and down in this fib zone. I personally, again, I'm not playing anything on here. I can't give you a bias other than wait for a breakout. Wherever breakout happens that looks the most appealing, take that breakout. Because there's just a whole bunch of consolidating right here. And it can get very confusing when it consolidates. Because when it consolidates like this, I'd rather be like, hey, when Bryce gets down here, or when Price gets up here, I feel like Price is either you could you could and you could play the range because there's a lot of people who play ranges and are still profitable traders. But I think that Price is probably going to do a like it can either a come to the downside and then go bullish to like fake you out, grab some liquidity. Or B, with these equal highs, which this one I think is going to happen more on USD Mexican pesos, is that price is going to break out to the upside and then push to the downside to grab some liquidity to the upside. And again, I feel like that's going to happen more than the downside move. But I'm not going to ignore this and say that, hey, if this setup happens, I think I'll low-key sell it. But right now, USD Mexican peso is not a pair I would trade. <clears throat> I really don't have a setup for it. So that's what I have for tech for tacos. Let me go take a look at Arby for you on US oil. I mean, on the tacos. And I'll look at it for US oil as well before I hop off. 
All right, so four hour time frame is bullish, but price is consolidating, so I would not trade this. That just means that a, a breakout is waiting to happen. Um, daily time frame is calling for a buy, but it's consolidating as well. You're safer going for a buy until these lows get broken than looking for sells. Um, and there's just mixed reviews with the confirmation, so I wouldn't play it. And one hour time frame called for a buy, but I wouldn't play it either. So, yeah, let's see what happens with Tacos. But I feel like a breakout to the upside, maybe even possible fake out to the upside before a fall is going to happen. And then oil, one hour, four hour. Oh, my goodness. The four hour gave a perfect selling opportunity, man. This is this is this is this perfect RB right here. This is what this is the stuff that RB this is stuff that I live for when I talk about RB and I hate when I miss setups like this because they don't happen often, but when they do, I want to capitalize off of them. This is just a perfect RB play right here. Got the breakout to the downside the, and then a retracement. Once the retracement happened, it wasn't confirmed. It would have given you a good amount of time before it confirmed it. Boom. I start seeing purple candles. I like seeing that, but there's still no full confirmation. There's Right now, that would be Actually, that would make it three out of four confirmations for me once it does this retest right here because the arbitrage Z was calling for sell. It's the level pro that wasn't calling for sell. I would still be looking. I would still get in. And this would be the trade, literally. Dang. The, yeah, this oil play was perfect for RB. This is a one to two right here. So let's just have it at one to two. But this would literally ha would have been the trade. And it would have given almost zero drawdown. Dang, RB. Man, that's 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 a solid play. I don't trade oil like that, so it's okay. But yeah, the four hour daily. <gasps> Ooh, what's this daily looking like? Hold on. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Daily time frame is saying everything is calling for a buy. Like literally. It I I have no I don't have any confidence in telling you that to buy. I tell you, I mean, to sell, I tell you to buy this thing. If I was an RB trader, wait, where's price at? 86.30? Even at current price, RB traders, this is not a bad trade. I think that I personally am going to wait for, um, I think I'm going to personally wait for the fibs down here and play this play. But, yeah, this looks good for a buy. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So, I've given a good amount of setups. Go back and watch the recording. Like I said, take three of these. Don't play all of them. Or if you are going to play all of them, play 0.5 on risk on all of them. But there are a good amount of setups that are out in the market right now, quite honestly. There are a good amount of setups out there. We're already in your USD. And we'll see how market plays out. We're in GPUSD swings as well, but we might see that we might have to take some profits off that GU and then just get into a buy. But other than that, I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you for hopping on and let's make some money this week, y'all. Later.